In our first video, we're going to talk about angles. In this video, we'll look at these um, five goals. Take a moment to pause the video and read over the goals so you know what to be expecting at the coming video. Before we can talk about drawing angles in standard position, we need to talk about naming angles. So let's say I have this angle here. Remember, angle is just two rays connected for common um, point. That common end point is called the vertex of that angle. And then say I name a point on this ray, we'll call it A. The vertex is B, and this point on this ray is C. So if I wanna name this angle, I can name it as angle, and I can just trace it, A, B, C. So I name this as angle, as angle A, B, C. Okay, oh, I should erase this first. Angle A, B, C. Or I could trace this from C, B, then A. And so I can A, I could call this angle C, B, A. So I do three letters, one dot, one point on each of the rays and the middle point is the vertex. Or if there's only one angle at that vertex, I can call it by the name of the point that's at the vertex, so angle B. Or another common thing you'll see is they'll identify inside the angle close to the vertex, you'll see a Greek letter. In this case, I put theta there. And so I could call this angle theta. So there's different ways I can name this vertex, I mean this angle. Now let's talk about writing an angle in standard position. So an angle in standard position is where the fixed ray is called the initial side. And this initial side is always on the positive x-axis. And the vertex is always at the origin. And the rotating um, ray, the other side, is called the terminal, ray, terminal side. Okay, we indicate the rotation, so we describe which, which direction we've rotated the terminal side from the initial side by drawing an arc and a arrow close to the vertex. So let me show you what this would look like. All right, so let's say I wanted to draw an angle. So I always start with drawing our initial side on the positive x-axis. And notice that my vertex is drawn at the origin. And then let's say I'm gonna rotate it around like this and my terminal side is here. Well, oh, I spelled that wrong. Try that again. My terminal side is at this point. So this is an angle in standard position. Now, let's say I have my vertex here, my initial side, my terminal side is here. Oh, at the same point as my last graph. But this time the rotation went this direction. Okay, this is a different angle with different angle measurement. Now, if the rotation, that's what the, the that's why it's so important for us to, when we're drawing these angles, to include the arrow and the arcs here, because that distinguishes these two angles, because they have the same initial point and they have the same terminal ray, but they're totally different angles. Now, if the angle is going here, like the first one, and, it, and our rotation is in a counterclockwise direction. This represents a positive angle measure. And in this case, we're looking at a positive angle that's approximately 145 degrees. Mm, maybe a little closer to 135. So I'd say this has 135 degrees. Okay. Now, when we're doing a when the when the arc is drawn in a counterclockwise direction, this represents a negative 
angle measure. For our example here, this is approximately negative 225 degrees. Is what we're looking at here. So counterclockwise arc and arrow represents a positive angle measure. Clockwise arc and arrow represents a negative angle measurement. All right, so I'm gonna sketch. Oh, I got an extra set of points here. Oh, it's not gonna undo. All right, so let's say I'm gonna sketch this angle of negative 340 degrees in stand position. So I start as always. My initial side is on the positive x-axis, vertex is on the origin. I am going in the negative direction, so that means I'll be going clockwise, and I'm gonna rotate until I get 340. Well, I know all the way around the circle is 360, so I'm just 20 degrees short of going all the way around the circle, and you have to draw that arc and arrow. So there's the angle of negative 340 degrees in um, standard position. Now for B here, I have 585 degrees. I'm gonna represent that. So I'm gonna draw my initial side. This time we're going as a positive angle, so it's going to, my rotation is gonna be in a positive direction. But 385, that's bigger than 360. So to help me figure this out, I'm going to subtract 360 degrees from this measure, and I get 225 degrees. All right, so that means that my arc goes all the way around the circle, and then I go an additional 225 degrees. So there's my ray. So that's what that angle would look like in standard position. There are some special angles. There are special um, types of angles where the terminal side also lies on an axis. And if this happens when it's drawn in standard position, these, ang these angles are called quadrantal angles. Okay. And so quadrantal angles are angles who has both the initial and terminal side on an axis. Okay, so here I'm gonna draw all the quadrantal angles between zero and 360 degrees, but not including zero. So that means, and I'm going in positive direction because this is starting, my smallest number is zero and going up to 360. So my first quadrantal angle is here at 90 degrees. My second quadrantal angle is here at 180 degrees. And then my third quadrantal angle would be here at 270 degrees. And then my last quadrantal angle would be here at 360 degrees, because I included that one. Now I wanna talk about converting between degrees and radians. So for us to think about this, think about a circumference of a circle. Circumference is equal to two pi r, all right? And so what they said is, okay, so let's assume we have the simplest circle I can think of, and that's called the unit circle. And it's called the unit circle because in this circle, the radius is equal to one unit. So it's equal to one. So circumference is equal to two pi times one, or two pi. All right, so we know all the way around the circle, going all the way around the circle here is equal to two pi. Well, we also know that all the way around the circle from right up here all the way around the circle is equal to 360 degrees. So from that we can say, okay, this is our basic. 360 degree is equal to 2 pi. And so we say that 360 degrees is the same as 2 pi radians. And that's our basic of this form. Now if I took this thing and broke it in half, I have another proportion I can set up that 180 degrees is equivalent to pi radians, and RAD is the abbreviation for radians. So that gives us a foundation, and this is the easiest one to work with, that we'll use to compare radians and to um, degrees. Now, if I wanted to solve this for one radian, 
I would divide each side by pi and I get 180 degrees over pi. So 180 degrees over pi is equal to one radian. And so basically what we're saying is okay. This is about one radian. Oops, I do. This right here is another radian. There is two, three radians. Four radians. That's still. Five radians. Six radians. And this little piece here is our fractional part. Because we recall that 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. And we know, if you want to think of the decimal value of that, we know that pi is approximately 3.14. So this is approximately 6.28. So this is that 0.28, that extra part that represents it. So that's what a radian basically looks like. But we're not going to use, I mean, occasionally we'll use the numbers 1 radian, 2 radian, 3 8 radians. But in most cases, our radian measures will be more likely to include a pi in our answers. All right, so now we're going to think about, okay, let's use this ratio that I know to try to figure out some special angles. Well, I figure out that all the way around the circle is 360 degrees or 2 pi. And we also figured out that if I went halfway around the circle, that's 180 degrees or pi radians. So 180 is equal to pi. So next thing you can do is say, okay, well, if all the way around the circle is pi, if I did halfway around the circle here, that would have to be half of pi. So that'd be pi over two. All right. Now, what if I only did 45 degrees or a fourth of this because I have one, two, three, four pieces to equal pi, four pi. So I can divide this into four pieces. So if I take pi and divide it into four equal pieces, each of these pieces are in length of pi over four. So I got four, a pi over four for our first one here. Now, if I add another one, that's going to be 2 pi over 4, which simplifies down to pi over 2, as already labeled. I get 3 here. That's going to be 3 pi over 4. And then 4, that's 4 pi over 4, which simplifies to pi over 2. And then if I add another 45 degrees, another piece, that is 5 pi over 4. And then another piece... And that gives us 6 pi over 4, which becomes 3 pi over 2. And then if we add in another 45 degree piece, that's six, 7, 7 pi over 4. And then our last one gives us 2. 8 pi over 4, which simplifies down to 2 pi, 360 degrees. Right. Now, what if I made these pieces smaller and did each piece that's 30 degrees. So there's a 30 degree slice. Okay. And here's another 30 degree slice. And another to get 90. And another. All right. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six of those slices in pie. So one of these slices is going to be equal to pi over 6. So 30 degrees is pi over 6. Then I have two slices, which is 2 pi over 6. Simplifies down to pi over 3. 
and that's going to be 60 degrees is equivalent to pi over 3. And 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2, 90 degrees. Then we have 4 pi over 6, which simplifies down to 2 pi over 3. Then 5 pi over 6, which does not simplify down, is 150 degrees. 6 pi over 6, the 6 is cancel out, that's just pi. Okay, and then we can do, here we have 7 pi over 6. And then another piece, this is 8 pi over 6, which simplifies down to 4 pi over 3. It's equivalent to 140 degrees, sorry. And then another slice, so that's 9 pi over 6, which equals 3 pi over 2, which we already labeled that for 270 degrees. And then another slice of, and so this is 10 pi over 6. 2 will go on that 5 times, 2 will go on that 3 times, so that's 5 pi over 3 is equal to 30 degrees. And then another 30 degree piece. And that's 11 pi over 6 is equal to 330. And then, of course, ending up with one more 30 degree angle, which is 12 pi over 6, which becomes 2 pi. And that's what we have measurement. And then the last thing that we need to figure out is 0 degrees is equal to 0 radians. No measure in degrees is still no measure in radians. And so these are special angles. We'll be working with these quite often throughout the semester. Uh, they're also the angles you'll have to memorize when we start memorizing our unit circle later in this section, later in this unit. So um, start working on these, start learning these radian measurements and how we figure them out by using slices of pies up here and how we break up the 180 degrees or the pi distance and when we're talking about radians. And that'll help you out as you learn these angles. But if it's not a special angle and it's not one that you're going to have memorized, we need to figure out a way to convert all angles from radians to degrees and degrees to radians. And so to do that, we're going to use that same idea that we just figured out. We remember that we know 180 degrees is the same as pi. So I can determine either going from degree to radian or radians degree. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the given degree or the given radian by one. So I'm gonna be multiplying by one. But I'm gonna to choose to write that one as either 180 degrees divided by pi, because those are equal things, so that's the same thing over itself, just in different units of measurement. And so that's gonna give me, um, if I want my answer in degrees, that's what I'll multiply by, or I'm gonna write it as pi divided by 180 degrees if I want my answer in radians. So the unit I want my answer in is the unit that goes on top of the fraction. So our notes here, if I want to convert from degree measure to radians, so the key is we're going to radians, I would multiply by pi over 180 degrees. So if I want to take 55 degrees to figure out that measurement in radians, I would multiply by pi over 180 degrees. So notice that our unit of measure of degree on the numerator and degree on the denominator cancel out. So that's the reason why we chose that. And so that's just gonna be 55 pi over 180. And then I'm gonna take that 55 pi over 180 and we're gonna simplify that down. Well, I know five will go into 55 11 times. So I'm gonna divide by five. And I know that five will go into 180 36 times and 11 does not go into 36. So that is my simplified radian measure. For, so that's how you convert from degrees to radians. Now, if I want to convert from radians to degrees, so now I'm going into degree mode, so I need the degree on top, I will multiply by 180 degrees divided by pi. So if I want to convert pi over 70 to degree measure, I would take pi over, se pi over seven multiplied by 180 degrees over pi. So the pi, radians cancel out 
And so I've gotten rid of my radian measure in my pies and I'm left with just the degrees. So I got 180 degrees divided by seven. And then I take 180 and I divide it by seven and I get a decimal of 25.71 degrees approximately. So approximately. And that's how you convert from radians to degrees. Now, with degree measure, I can do decimal as I just did this answer here, or I can write it in what's called degree minute second form or DMS form. So now this section, we're gonna talk about how to decree, how to do, translate from decimal mode to DMS mode or from DMS mode to decimal mode. To do this, you need to know some foundation knowledge. Our first found foundational knowledge is that each degree is divided into 60 equal parts, which are called minutes. Think about the clock. Our hours are divided into 60 minutes. And our symbol, our notation for minutes is this. And each minute is divided into 60 equal parts that are called seconds. And its notation is this. So here, this problem is I take 120 degrees, 55 uh, minutes and 25 seconds, and I wanna convert this into degree um, to decimal degree mode. Now to do this, I'm going to use that conversion knowledge that, um, one minute is equal, um, one degree is equal to 60 minutes. So this is what this is saying. So this says one degree is equal to 60 minutes and one minute is equal to 60 seconds. That's what these two tell us. So we're going to use those ratios to help us out. So I want degrees as my final answer. So I'm gonna take this 120 degrees, that's our in degree mode, and then I'm gonna add this 55 minutes, but I need this minutes to be written in um, degree form. So I'm going to multiply 55 minutes by one degree is equal to 60 minutes. And notice when I do this, you take care of your units, your units will take care of you. My minutes cancel out and my own unit measurement is degrees. So I'm in degrees again. And then to convert 25 seconds into degrees, I gotta do this in two steps. First, I recall that one minute is 60 seconds and one degree is equal to 60 minutes. And then I check my units, seconds and seconds cancel out, minutes and minutes cancel out, and I'm left with a unit of degree. So all my unit is in degrees now. And then I just do the math on, on each of these to work through the process. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that 55 and divide it by 60. Get back to green. Okay, so I got 120, and 55 divided by 60 gives me 0.916 repeating. And then I'm gonna take the 25 and divide it by 60, and also divide by another 60, and I get 0 0.00694 repeating. And then I'm gonna add those answers together. and I get 120.4236 degrees. And that's changing my, decimal, my DMS mode into decimal mode. Now let's go the other direction. Let's say I wanna convert from decimal mode to DMS mode. So here I'm given 38 degree, 38.675 degrees. I wanna convert that to DMS mode. Well, I have 38 degrees. Then I have the leftovers, which is 0.65, give myself a little bit more room. I have the leftover part, which is 0.675. And that's in degrees, but I want this to be in minutes. So I recall that one degree is equal to 60 minutes. 
And again, I flipped over that ratio this time because I want to cancel out degrees and I want minutes in my answer. And so I'm going to do the math there. So I'm going to take 0. 0.675 and multiply by 60. And I get 40.5. So I have 40 full minutes. And then I got this 0. 0.5 left over. So that's what that leftover part, that 0. 0.5 minutes needs to be converted into seconds. And recall that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So I'm going to take that 0. 0.5 and times it by 60. And that's going to give me 30. So I have 30 seconds. Because if I check my units of measurement here, the minutes cancel out. Answer is in seconds. So I've now converted this into DMS mode. Our next goal is to learn about coterminal and reference angles. So a coterminal angle is in or our angles. Um, coterminal angles are two angles in standard position that have the same terminal side. Okay, but different measurements. To find coterminal angles, you would simply take the angle that you're given. To find its coterminal angle, you either add or subtract 360 degrees, if you're in degree mode, times by any constant. So 360 degrees, you might add it once, you might add it twice, you might add it three times. So you can add it as many times as you need to get a new distinct positive or negative angle. If you're in radian mode, you would take... 2 pi, because that's what 360 equal to times any constant value or in an integer value. So here we add a degree in radians. So if I want to take 145 degrees and find one positive and one negative coterminal angle for it. So I would take 145 and I add 360 degrees. Okay, so if I take 145 and add 360, I get 505. So that is a positive angle that is coterminal to this, that has the same um, terminating point. So for example, a hundred and forty-five degrees is say about here. That's one hundred and forty-five degrees. So I'm finding it's a coterminal angle to this, so I found that if I take 145 and I add in another 360, so we start it, let me draw that better. So start it, I had 345, 345 degrees, and then add in another, add in a full rotation around. It doesn't like me to keep, it wants to draw straight lines when I do that. I end up at the same spot. And this angle here is that 505 degrees. And that's what it's doing. Now you don't have to do the, the visual here, but that's just to show you what's going on. So now let me find a negative one. So I can take 145 degrees and subtract 360 from it. And I end up with negative 215 degrees. So again, I started with this 145 degree angle. And then so here, to do this angle, I started at 145 degrees and then, oh, see, it'll let me go again. I hate it when it, all right, so try this again. And then I start at this 145 degree angle and then I subtract 360. And so I end up with, let me do another color so you can see it. We end up with this angle here which is negative 215 degrees. All right, same thing can be happening in um, radian mode. So if I have two pi over three, I can add 360 degrees, but in radians, that's two pi. 
So in order to add this, first thing I need to do is find a common denominator. So three is gonna be my common denominator. So I'm gonna rewrite this as six pi over three. And that gives me eight pi over three. So that's a positive coterminal angle. And then two pi over three minus two pi, which we know is the same as six pi over three, gives me a negative four pi over three. So there's one positive, one negative coterminal angle. Next, let's talk about finding what's called reference angles. Okay, an angle's reference angle is the size of the smallest acute angle, which we'll call theta prime, formed by the terminal side of angle theta and the closest or nearest x axis. All right, so what we're talking about visually. So let's say we have this angle in standard position and I want to find its um, reference angle. So its reference angle is going to be the angle from its terminal side to the nearest x-axis. So this is its reference angle, would be this angle here. Now a reference angle is always positive and always acute, so that means our theta here is always going to be less than 90 degrees, but greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero. Now, if it's in quadrant one, so to figure out first thing you have to do, you, you have different rules for refer finding reference angles depending on which quadrant the angle lies in when drawn in standard position. So first thing you have to do is sketch the graph in standard position. So, if your angle that you're looking at is in quadrant one, so this is our angle here, well, our reference angle is going to be from the terminal side of this, so it's going to be the same angle. So in quadrant one, our angle given is the same as our reference angle. We don't have to do any work. Now, if you're looking at quadrant two, This is the angle given, this is theta. To find our reference angle, that's from the terminal side here. So this is our reference angle. Notice I'll take theta and theta prime and add them together. That equals 180 degrees, a, full, a, a line. So if I wanted to solve this equation for our reference angle, that'll be 180 degrees minus theta. Or if I'm in radian mode, remember 180 degrees is equal to pi. So pi minus r theta, not theta prime, theta. And that equals our reference angle, theta prime. All right, now if I was in quadrant three, This is our angle, that's theta. And then we want to find the reference angle here, which is theta prime. Notice that if I take my theta and I subtract theta prime, our reference angle, I'm left with a straight line, 180 degrees. Okay. So if I wanted to solve this for theta, I would say theta, or I want to solve this for theta prime, okay? So I mean, I have theta here, 180 degrees plus theta prime, and then subtract the 180 degrees. Oh, 
not. So if I take 180 degrees, oh, man, doing bad. So I take theta minus 180 degrees, that's going to give me theta prime. So that's going to be our formula for quadrant three. Theta minus 180 degrees equals our reference angle, or theta minus pi is equal to our reference angle. All right, last quadrant, quadrant four. That's our given angle. This is our reference angle, so that's theta prime. This is theta. So notice that if I take, let's do blue. If I take theta and I add theta prime, that's going to give me 360 degrees. So to solve for theta prime, our reference angle is going to be 360 degrees minus theta. And that's equal to our reference angle. Or in radian mode, that's 2 pi minus theta equals our reference angle. So those are our formulas for finding our reference angle. So find, the re find a reference angle to each of the following. So first we're going to start with 200 degrees. So let's draw 200 degrees. So I know that's 180 and a little bit more. There's my 200 degrees. That's theta. So I am in quadrant 3. Since I'm in quadrant 3, um, this will be my angle, theta, minus 180 degrees is equal to my reference angle. So in this case, I'll take 200 degrees minus 180 degrees to equal 20 degrees. So theta prime, my reference angle, is this angle here, which is 20 degrees. This is a negative angle, negative seven pi over four. So remember pi over four is about 45 degrees. So that's one, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's halfway over here. So that's negative seven pi over four, which is our theta, our right, given angle. And I want to find its reference angle, which is this angle here. That's what I need to figure out. Now, since this is a negative, one cool thing about this is we kind of fib on what we call our quadrants. So this is the first quadrant our negative angle went in. This is the second quadrant our negative angle went through. This is our third quadrant our negative angle. So this is in this fourth quadrant our negative angle. So we're going to use that fourth quadrant rule. And actually, I'm going to use this one since it's, in theta, since it's in radian mode. And so we're going to take 2 pi minus our angle of 7 pi over 4. Now, notice I didn't do minus our negative angle because we kind of changed which quadrant it is. We can change our rule, and we just think of this as a positive angle measurement when we changed our quadrants to be our first quadrant, went through second quadrant, etc. So I need to find a common denominator again. So... 8 pi over 4 minus 7 pi over 4 just gives me pi over 4. So our reference angle is pi over 4. Now let's talk about finding arc length. Okay, to determine the arc length. Now arc length, when we're talking about arc length, what we're finding is this measure here. This is our arc length. And that's how much of a circle is circumscribed or, or, or shown or strewn out from a inscribed angle. So we're going to call that angle theta. These are two radius because this the vertex is at the center of that circle. And this is our arc length. We're, we'll use S to represent arc length. Now, if your theta is in radian measure, and this only works in radian measure, then your arc length is equal to your radius times your theta, your angle measure. Okay. given again that theta has to be in radian measure. So how to find the arc length of get any given angle measure, um, given, um, arc length formed by any angle. Um, if necessary, first convert the measurement to radians. 
and then use the formula s is equal to r theta. That's all you have to do to do this. So in this example, let's say that this measurement here is 270 degrees and our radius is um, 13 feet. And I want you to find the length of this arc here. So I wanna find that arc length. So to find that arc length, first thing I need to do is figure out my angle measurement in radians, because it was given in degrees. So remember, 270 degrees, I multiply this by one, but I want radians, so I'm gonna choose pi over 180 degrees. I chose that so that my degrees cancel out and I'm left with just radians. And so, let's see, that would be three pi over two, okay? And then I use the formula, arc length is equal to radius times theta. So arc length is equal to 13 feet times three pi over two. And so that's going to be 39 pi over two, and that's gonna be my arc length, 39 pi over two feet. Now, 39 pi over two doesn't make a lot of sense, so usually on this, we'll go to our decimal, and plugging that into our calculator, let's see what we get. 39 pi divided by two is 61.26 um, feet. So approximately, our arc length would be 61.25 feet. Okay, next we might, might ask you to find the area of a sector. So the area of the sector is I want you to find the piece of this pie, pretty much, is what it's asking you to do here. So again, your, cent your vertex of your angle, and this is a central angle, the central angle theta, is at the center of the circle. These two are the radius of the circle, and this circumscribed part here is the arc length. So if theta is in radian measure, then the area of a circle is equal to one half theta times r squared. Again, theta must be in radian measure for this formula to work. So I wanna find the area of a circle formed by a central angle of 17 pi over 12 and a radius of 14 yards. Okay, so this is already in um, radian mode, so I don't have to do any conversion. I go straight to my formula, one half times our angle measure in radians, which is 17 pi over 12 times by our radius squared. All right, so multiplying through this, I get 833 pi over six. And what's our unit measurement? Square yards. And then again, that's not, doesn't tell me a lot. So I'm gonna punch that in my calculator, 436.16 squared yards would be the area of that sector formed. Our last topic is talking about something called linear and angular speed. So when an object is moving in a circular path, there are two types of speed that are formed. The first one is called linear speed. Linear speed is along a straight line, line, linear, and can be determined by its distance it moves along, which is its displacement, in a given time interval. So basically what that means is linear speed equals arc length, that's the distance traveled, divided by time. Now, the symbols that we use for this, linear speed, they use the Epsilon, which um, Greek symbol, um, arc length we know is S and time is T. So that's kind of the formula for defining your arc length. So a second hand on a clock is 10.2 centimeters long. Find the linear speed of the tip of the second hand as it passes along the clock face. So first thing you want to thank yourself. So if the, if the second hand goes all around around the circle that tells us that in one revolution or rotation around the circle, our arc length, arc length traveled is, well, okay, arc length is equal to 
um, the angle theta in radians, which is two pi all the way around the circle, one revolution around the circle, times by our radius, and they told us that that's the length of the hand, which is 10.2 centimeters. So our arc length will travel 20.4 pi centimeters. And so our linear speed is going to be equal to our arc length divided by time. Well, how long did it take it to travel that um, 20.4 pi centimeters? Well, it was one full, the second hand went all the way around, which was a minute or 60 seconds. Okay, so it traveled that distance in 60 seconds. So punching that into my calculator, I get my linear speed is 1.07 centimeters per second. The second type of speed that we'll talk about is called angular speed. And it can be determined the angle through which a point rotates in a given time interval. So angular speed is the angle rotating per unit of time. So angular speed equals angle traveled divided by time. And so notation for this is angular speed is usually noted with um, the omega symbol and angle travel, that's our angle in radians and our time measure. So this is in radians. All right, so a blade of a wind turbine are 116 feet long. Okay, so that's our radius. The propeller rotates at 15 revolutions per minute. Find the angular speed of the propeller in radians per minute. All right, so again, think about each revolution. So for each revolution, revolution, let's spell that right. For each revolution generates an angle of two pi, because we know two pi is equal to 360 degrees fully around the circle, okay? And so if we wanna figure out are um, so in two pi and um, one revolution is traveled two pi is our angle but we want 15 revolutions per minute so I have to take that 15 times it by our theta which in this case is two pi and that's going to give me 30 pi so 30 pi is our radian measure of our angle traveled by that um, turbine that propeller as it rotates so our angular speed is going to be equal to theta which is 30 pi divided by and we want it a minute in 15 revolutions per minute so this is in one minute it went that distance and so therefore our angular speed is equal to 30 pi radians per minute 